Welcome to the presentation of the 11th and final Gruber Justice Prize. The Justice Prize honors individuals and groups that have advanced the cause of justice as delivered through the legal system. We are delighted to be here at the National Constitution Center, a most fitting place to present the final Justice Prize. Today we honor five recipients, Barbara Arnwine, Morris Dees, the Association for Civil Rights in Israel, the Center for Legal and Social Studies, and the Kurdish Human Rights Project. Each of these recipients, in the face of formidable political, cultural, and historical forces aligned against democratic values, has courageously provided access to legal justice to, victim, to victims of discrimination and oppression. Let me tell you a little about the company they're keeping. The Foundation's Prize Program, which was established in 2000, currently presents five annual $500,000 prizes in the fields of cosmology, genetics, neuroscience, justice, and women's rights. Each prize recognizes achievements and discoveries that produce fundamental shifts in human knowledge and culture. On September 26, the Women's Rights Prize was presented to Avega Agohozo at the Yale Club in New York City. Later this month, at the 61st Annual Meeting of the American Society of Human Genetics in Montreal, Canada, the Genetics Prize will be presented to Ronald Davis. At the end of October, the Cosmology Prize will be presented at the Max Planck Institute for Astrophysics in Garching, Germany, to Mark Davis, George F. Stathieu, Carlos Frank, and Simon White. And finally, in November, the Neuroscience Prize will be presented at the 41st Annual Meeting of the Society for Neuroscience in Washington, D.C., to Huda Zogby. I'd like to acknowledge the visionary leadership of my husband, Peter Gruber, in establishing and conceiving of these prizes. Peter is ill and cannot be with us today. The Justice Prize has been especially dear to his heart. As many of you know, we have established a succession plan for the entire Gruber Foundation program at Yale University. The three science prizes will continue as before, but the Justice and Women's Rights Prizes will be carried forward by Yale in a different format, which preserves the mission, but makes them academic programs at Yale, called the Gruber Program for Global Justice and Women's Rights at the Yale School of Law. We have found a strong partner in Yale, and the missions of the Justice and Women's Rights Prizes will be well served by the new program, albeit in a different form. With enthusiasm for the future, and a bit of nostalgia for the past, please join us in full appreciation of this final ceremony. Thank you. We have awarded the Justice Prize annually to acknowledge courageous efforts and to encourage further advancements toward bringing about a fundamentally just world. To say a few words about our laureates, let me present an advisor to the Justice Prize, Ramon Mugirat, here from Barcelona, Spain, where he is a practicing lawyer. Mr. Mugirat is a former president of the Council of the Bars and Law Societies of the European Union and was co-chair of the Human Rights Institute of the International Bar Association. Ramon. Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> the laureates of the Gruber Justice Prize include the following. In 2010, Michael Kirby, a retired Australian High Court Justice who used international law to protect human rights. John Duggart, an attorney who helped bring South Africa into the post-apartheid era, and the Indian Law Resource Center, which champions the interests of indigenous peoples in the Americas. 
In 2009, Brian Stevenson, an advocate for marginalized inmates in the U.S. legal system, and the European Roma Rights Center, a proponent of Romani rights. In 2008, Judge Thomas Bergenthal, Inter-American Court of Human Rights, and Jerome J. Shestak, former president of the American Bar Association, advocates for racial and gender equality and human rights. Mr. Shestak, who additionally was a very good friend to the foundation, passed away this August, and we would like to take a moment of silence to remember him. In 2007, Judge Carmen Arjibay of Argentina, Judge Carlos Cerda of Chile, and Monica Feria of Peru for human rights work locally and internationally. In 2006, Aharon Barak, the retired president of the Supreme Court of Israel, for awarded for championing an activist judiciary and the rule of law and democracy. In 2005, Malaysian attorney Dato Param Kumaras Wami was awarded, who at considerable risk to himself, stood up for the independence of the judiciary. <clears throat> In 2004, Chief Justice Arthur Chaskalson and then Deputy Chief Justice Pius Langa for helping to establish South Africa's constitution as a model for modern democratic societies. In 2003, Madame Justice Rosalie Silverman Abella and Madame Justice Bertha Wilson of Canada's Supreme Court for upholding the rights of women and minorities. 2002, Sam Nariman, a member of the Parliament of India and senior advocate of the Supreme Court for helping establish the rule of law in India. In 2001, Anthony Gabe, former Chief Justice of Zimbabwe and the Law Society of Zimbabwe for upholding the independence of the judiciary. Around the world, from Zimbabwe to Canada, India and Israel to Latin America, the USA to South Africa, the Justice Prize has since its inception in 2001 recognized outstanding efforts to advance the cause of justice through the legal system. Those who have been honored have been gone beyond the duty to serve, have inspired excellence, set high standards for leadership and dedication to a just world, often at a great personal risk. It has been an honor and a pleasure to be affiliated with the prize. The Gruber Foundation could not have chosen a better location for the presentation of this Justice Prize. The city of Philadelphia, the city of the Liberty Bell, the city of Jerome Shestak, always guided by the Deuteronomy sentence, justice, justice shall you pursue. Thank you, Ramon. And now to the presentation of the 2011 prize. A distinguished international board of advisors has guided the selection of this year's recipients, and its members are Carmen Maria Argabai, Arthur Chaskelson, who has served as the chair, Param Kumaraswamy, Bernice Donald, Michael Kirby, Robert Cushion, and Ramon Muirat. Nothing gives my husband Peter and I greater satisfaction than the knowledge that the selection rests in the hands of these capable advisors. We deeply appreciate the expertise, the integrity, the commitment, and the enthusiasm the advisors bring to the judging process. 
Before we ask the recipients to step forward, I would like to present Robert Cushion, an advisor to the Justice Prize. Mr. Cushion is the managing director of the European Roma Rights Center, which received the Justice Prize in 2009 and has been active in the human rights field in Eastern Europe and the former Soviet Union, as well as in the areas of health, human rights, and development. He has served in the office of the legal advisor of the United States Department of State and as liaison to the International Criminal Tribunals for Yugoslavia and Rwanda. He will read the prize citation and briefly describe the prize recipients. Robert? The 2011 Justice Prize of the Peter and Patricia Gruber Foundation is proudly presented to five recipients for extraordinary contributions over many years to human rights and the rule of law. For over 35 years, Barbara Ehrenwein has promoted equal justice for disadvantaged groups, both domestically and internationally. For more than 40 years, Morris Dees has battled the many faces of injustice in defense of vulnerable groups. Through the Southern Poverty Law Center, he has been a courageous voice for justice. I have to say, I realize I'm not going to be able to retire for a long time after seeing the uh, length of dedication of these uh, honorees today. For over 38 years, the Association for Civil Rights in Israel has promoted and defended the rights of vulnerable communities in Israel and the occupied territories. It has been a courageous voice for the human rights of all. For more than 30 years, the Center for Legal and Social Studies has worked to eradicate human rights abuses in Argentina. It has labored to defend the rights of the vulnerable and to protect the human rights of all through the law. And finally, for over 17 years, the Kurdish Human Rights Project has both in the world and before the European Court of Human Rights promoted and protected the human rights of all who live in Kurdish regions. Now you're going to hear more from uh, our honorees uh, individually, uh, so let me not praise them further now. Uh, I won't bury them either. Um, The selection committee this year, in the final year of the prize, was faced with a very difficult choice. But as we're all accomplished lawyers, uh, we came up with a clever solution to the problem. When faced with uh, a choice between A, B, C, D, or E, we chose F. All of the above. Um, Now, recognizing multiple winners of the prize, I think, is is quite appropriate, particularly in this last year of of the prize in its present form. Um, And uh, it's a recognition that the deprivation of justice takes many forms and occurs in many places. In the developed and the developing world, in dictatorships and democracies, and that the deprivation of justice affects many different kinds of people. Uh, racial and ethnic minorities, women, children, sexual minorities, political activists. Uh, These are all uh, uh, people who have been the uh, beneficiaries of the work uh, of our honorees today. Um, And while our honorees are all working in different places with different groups of people, uh, they are united in their dedication to fulfilling the aspirations of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, that all human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. And it is for this dedication that we're honoring them today. Thank you.